I recently got two 4K 144Hz displays to make my uh, Mac Mini a productive workstation. However, when trying to connect the uh, displays, external storage, and wired networking, I realized that uh, the number and type of ports on the Mac Mini were completely inadequate. To solve this problem, I started looking for a docking station. Among the many brands, Kensington and Anchor docking stations caught my attention. In this video, I will do a detailed comparison of these two. In terms of appearance, the uh, Kensington docking station has a more square design with a simple and functional style. The surface has been processed well, full of texture and can be well integrated into a variety of uh, office or home environments. However, there are some uh, problems with the uh, materials used and some details of workmanship such as the uh, use of plastic that is more easily worn at the uh, interface and this uh, plastic is not oil resistant enough, making it easy to show dirt. The aluminum alloy around the edges also seems to be a bit uh, sharp. The anchor docking station is more compact and delicate with the uh, rounded corners design making it look more friendly, easy to carry, and placed in uh, different locations. In terms of uh, materials and the workmanship, it's hard to fault. Now let's take a look at their interface configuration first. In terms of uh, front ports, the uh, Kensington is more abundant. It comes with uh, two Thunderbolt 5 ports, one of which support 140 watt charging on the uh, upstream port and the other support 60 watt charging on the downstream port. In addition, there are two SD 4.0 card slots and a 2-in-1 audio jack. The C port at the front on the Anchor is a regular USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 Gbps port which offers charging feature but the two ports together can only provide up to 45 watts. This card slot is placed on the side. However, looking at this, you might think that the Kensington would be better than the uh, Anchor in terms of a charging experience. But if you look at the Kensington's power adapter, you will see that it's only 180 watts. If we do a simple addition, we will see that the Kensington can get all the ports to full power at the same time. The Anchor's front ports share 45 watts, but it can do all of them at full power. When it comes to the experience of using the car slot, Kensington's design is intuitive with the logo side facing up when inserted into the docking station. However, inserting and removing a TF card can be difficult if you don't have a bit of fingernails. In contrast, the experience on the Anchor can be done with ease. However, when inserting an SD card into Anchors, the card needs to be reversed. Also, the difference in speed isn't all that great. The Anchor, while only claiming a UHS-1 speed of 104 megabytes per second, was able to hit the card's claimed 160 megabytes per second in our real-world test. The Kensington did the same and was able to hit that speed. So we tested again with a nominal 280 megabytes per second card and the Kensington could run the full speed, but the Anchor dropped down to UHS-1 here. At the back, the Anchor has three Thunderbolt 5 ports, with the most left being the upstream port and the two next to it being the downstream ports. There are also two USB-A wired network ports, as well as 8K 60Hz HDMI and DP ports. It's worth noting that the Anchor docking station comes with an extremely rare AC power connector, which means it doesn't have to be paired with a big bulky brick style power adapter and can be powered with just a single power cord. If you need to take it on the go, you will also be able to reduce the weight by nearly 600 grams as a result. The biggest difference between Kensington's port on the back and Anchor's is that uh, Kensington lacks a monitor port for direct video output. To summarize the uh, interface situation, the Anchor has two more 10 Gbps USB-C ports than the Kensington, replacing a uh, Thunderbolt 5 port with a more common one. However, when it comes to our interface layout, these two docking stations have uh, different problems in uh, different user scenarios. The first scenario is that uh, if you want to expand it to three additional screens, the uh, desk will be cluttered when using the Kensington. There will be a Thunderbolt upstream cable connected to the uh, computer and the another cable that needs to go around to the back from the front panel to connect it to the monitors. The anchor is cleaner in this case, with all three monitors being able to be plugged in from the back. The second scenario is that you only connect two monitors, but you need to connect a high-speed SSD to copy files. The Kensington plugs in easily, while the anchor connects to the front low-speed connector, so you will need a long Thunderbolt cable to use the high-speed connector easily. However, if you don't need to move the high-speed SSD around much, you can just leave it there for a long time, at which point the Kensington's design becomes a liability. 
We also took the liberty of testing the speed of our Thunderbolt Find Drive with two monitors attached. As you can see, the read speed of the SSD is the most affected, while the write speed doesn't change much because of our SSD isn't fast enough. With a high brush, high resolution display connected, the docking station's connection speed was 120 Gbps from the Thunderbolt host to the docking station, while the docking station speed to the Thunderbolt host was reduced to 40 Gbps. Although the SSD to the docking station is still 80 Gbps, the docking station to the host is reduced to 40 Gbps which is why the read speed reduction is observed. If you've been using these docking stations for a long time, you should know that these Thunderbolt docking stations generate significant heat. While the Kensington docking station uses a passive cooling solution, the Anchor docking station has an integrated fan inside as a way to deal with the heat generated by the Thunderbolt chip and the built-in power supply. So right now, I have the Kensington docking station and Anchor docking station connected to one monitor each, right? So let's see the uh, temperature control. Kensington docking station, the temperature, uh, the hottest uh, part is from the, uh, the ports. As you can see, the uh, temperature is as high as 48 degrees Celsius. It's from the USB-A port and uh, is uh, actually a bit hot. While on the anchor docking station, the temperatures are significantly lower, right? The highest is 38 degrees Celsius, but above 40 degrees Celsius, which means the temperature control on the anchor docking station is much better. Next, let's look at the USB expansion performance. Both of these docking stations have the same drawback. All of their USB ports, network ports, sound cards, and SD card slots all come from the Intel's Thunderbolt chip, the JHL9480. This chip has only one 10 Gbps USB channel, which means that uh, while both offer a large number of USB ports, in practice, you can't get all your USB devices to run at 10 Gbps, and it even affects wired internet speeds to some extent. The test result reveals the truth. We found that uh, if we downloaded the file over the network while copying it to the computer, the speed of the network will be affected. Similarly, if the uh, same operation is performed when uh, copying from SD card, Although both SD card slots support UHS-2 high-speed SD cards, the impact is far less than that of copying a high-speed SSD. Let's take a look at the NIC performance. Both docking stations are equipped with a 2.5 Gbps RG45 port, which is a Realtek RTL8156 2.5G USB card, as shown by the device ID in the system. This suggests that the docking station will have a better compatibility for example, it can be used for PCs that don't support the Thunderbolt interface or for devices such as iPads and phones. However, it should be noted that if you use a better PCIe card and connect it to a PC that does not support the Thunderbolt protocol or USB 4 or plug it into a Mac that does not support the Thunderbolt protocol, the PCIe card will fail. Depending on the host computer use, the ability to output DPL video may be lost. Fortunately, Anchor has included the supported device types in the product details page. There are also some compatibility issues with this USB card. When you run a speed test, you will notice that it runs at full uploads but download speeds speeds are a bit slower. The reason for this issue is that the default driver is too old, which can be solved by updating to a specific driver version. To summarize, both products have their own focus in terms of design and functionality. Kensington's interface configuration is more focused on high-speed transmission between devices, but the front TF card slot needs to be improved, and the lack of a direct video output port on the back may not be flexible enough when connecting to multiple monitors. On the other hand, Anchor's interface layout is more reasonable, especially suitable for multi-display connection scenarios, with three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back and many video output ports, making wiring more concise. In addition, the Anchor docking station's built-in power supply design makes it smaller, saving valuable desk space, while the built-in fan's active cooling efficiency reduces temperature of the device during high load operation, improving stability and service life. In terms of USB expansion performance, both are limited by the chip's channel limitations and cannot fully meet the needs of all devices running at high speed at the same time. In terms of NIC performance, although both are equipped with 2.5 Gbps NICs, they still need to pay attention to compatibility and driver updates.
Overall, the Kensington and the Anchor docking stations have their own advantages and you can choose the best one according to your needs. If portability, heat dissipation, and the neatness of multi-monitor connections are more important, the Anchor docking station may be more suitable. While the Kensington dock station will be better if you need to connect to high-speed storage devices more frequently. Alright, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel. This is Wolfgang from China. See you next time.